In the previous video, I used three different tracks to affect one single object in After Effects. And in this video, I'll be using one track to affect three different objects. So I've loaded in a kick drum into Renoise, and in this track, I've added a delay so that we have distinct left and right echoes. In After Effects, I've loaded in three pictures of the heavy character from Team Fortress 2 and I've tied in the rotation of the two behind the main one in front so that they rotate to the left and right according to the keyframes that have been created from the left and right audio channels meaning that they react to the individual echoes coming from those directions. If you take a look at the expressions that have been created I have multiplied this one by 0.5 so it doesn't rotate quite as much and for the left one, I've multiplied it by minus 0.5, so that it rotates in the opposite direction. The other thing which I've changed here is the anchor point of the pictures. This is the point around which the rotation takes place. Normally this is in the centre of the picture, but that's not ideal here. So using the pan behind tool, I've moved them to the bottom, and that means they will rotate around that central figure making it look much better. We can do a couple of things to make this look better. As before, adding in motion blur. And we can also make an adjustment to the keyframes themselves. Selecting them all, right click, and use keyframe assistant, easy ease. This will make a much smoother transition out of and into the values. Uh, works a lot like the cubic curve for the automation in Renoise. And now we'll be creating some effects by moving these guys within 3D space. To do this, enable the 3D layers. And now you can see the position for each of these layers has a third Z value added to it. So changing this value for these two guys, you can see that they're moving further away and in front of the one in the middle. Now this is not just a simple scaling, this is actually moving within 3D space. And to show you this, I will create a new camera. I'll just use the default settings. And using the unified camera tool, we can spin around and see that even though that these are flat 2D layers, they have been moved around within 3D space. Now that these two are physically behind the central one, we can add in a light for some extra realism. Ensure that cast shadows is on, and we'll just use the defaults for those other values there. And we'll move the light source around until it looks good. And using this small cross here, you can adjust where the light is pointing towards. Now you can see a problem that sometimes occurs here when you move things further away. The edge of this heavy is showing, so we'll just move him down. So we have a light source, but it's still not casting any shadows. In order to do this, click on the central heavy, press A twice on the keyboard, and I'll bring up the material options, and turn on cast shadows. And we'll just move the light source around until it looks as good as possible. So now to move this central heavy within Z space. To do this, we'll tie in his Z position value to the slider keyframe values from both channels. And like in the previous video, we only want one of these values to be changed. So we'll get the other two to refer to themselves and that way they will stay static. Now you can see he jumped back there. And that is because positive Z values will move the object further away from you. So we will multiply this by negative 5. And that way he'll really jump out at us. And previewing this, we can now see the advantage 
of doing this properly within 3D space. The objects react properly to the light and cast accurate shadows according to their movement. The other advantage is that objects will now react to the camera as well. So if we turn on depth of field within the camera options, now objects will become blurred depending on whether or not they are in focus. Now if we set this to 200, then as the central heavy surges forward, he will become slightly blurred and out of focus, lending it that little extra bit of realism. Doing everything within one track in Renoise is okay for using a short sound because then the echoes from the delay do not cross over into the both channels object within After Effects at the same time as the original sound. If we're using a longer sustained sound like this one, then we will use some extra tracks within Renoise in order to prevent this cross-pollination of sound and we will place the same sound on a separate track and use the delay there and we'll use a sneaky little option in the bottom right hand corner here Mute Source This way the original sound is not played in this track and so we have two separate tracks one for the original sound and one for the delay and now we can adjust things within After Effects properly